welcome to the NDT Systems TG410 setup video. In this video, we will discuss how to set up the 410 to measure on a material using, in this case, a standardized steel test wedge. We will do this with three different kinds of probes. The first is a dual element contact probe. The second is a single element contact probe. And the third one is a single element delay line probe. Let's get started with the dual element probe. This dual element probe is a TG506. It's 5 megahertz and has a 0.375 element diameter. To get started, we'll go ahead and plug it into the gauge. We'll turn the gauge on. We have our startup screen, we have a coarse range waveform and a fine range waveform. In order to calibrate it, we can do one of two things. We can either select the probe from a menu or we can set it up from scratch. To start, let's start with a setup. Scroll over to setup using the arrow keys push enter. Go ahead and couple your probe to the thinnest section that you're going to be measuring. In this case it's 0.1 inches for me. Go to the zero or locale button on the keypad, push enter, and we'll adjust the zero until the reading on the screen matches our gauge reading. Next, go to the velocity high cal button, push enter, and go ahead and couple it to a high re thickness region, in this case one inch. We're going to adjust our velocity until our gauge reads one inch. Going back to the low thickness, we can see that the readings are within tolerance as we increment thickness along the step wedge. Let's move on to the single element contact. Here we have a C11 contact transducer, also 5 megahertz. We're going to plug it into the gauge to the leftmost socket, and then again we'll go into the setup and look for the file. Once you've found the C11, C13 file, go ahead and hit select. Next, we'll go ahead and couple the probe to our area of low thickness, still 0.1 inches. And here we can see that the gate is not triggering on the waveform. We can do one of two things. We can either increase the gain or we can lower the threshold. Let's go ahead and lower the threshold and try and capture the gate on this pulse. We'll go to gates, we'll go to threshold, increase that, or excuse me, decrease that to 35 or 30 percent. Go to IP block and pull that out so that the gate passes over the initial pulse here. Next, go to your zero locale to calibrate the low thickness. Adjust the zero so that our reading measures 0.1 inch.
Next, go to velocity high cal and couple to a region of high thickness, in this case one inch. And increase the velocity until we get our desired reading. Now if we go and couple along various parts of the cow block, may need more coupling over time as it dissipates. We can see that all the readings are within tolerance. Finally, let's look at the delay line transducer. Here we have a D11 delay line transducer. These are at 10 megahertz. We'll plug the probe into the gauge as before. And we'll look for the setup. Now on the delay line we'll need to make a few adjustments. Go to the gate section and change the gating not from first echo to second echo but from interface echo to first echo. Next as before couple your probe to an area of low thickness. We'll need to increase the gain for that waveform to trigger. And we'll need to pull our gate out so it blocks this region of the interface echo. Instead of IP block, it's IF block this time. Next, go to your zero and set it so that our reading reads 0.1 inches. And as before, go to a region of higher thickness and hit your velocity high cal and adjust the velocity until we reach our desired value, in this case 0.75 inches. And if we measure across the block, we can see that our values are within expectation. Now, if we have a probe that isn't contained in the setup files, we can go ahead and set it up manually. To the, do this, we'll go to Probe. Select Single or Dual Element. Since the D11 is a single element delay, we do Single. Contact or delay. This is a delay line, so we'd select delay. Damping is fine tuning for the waveform. We have automatic gain control. This will boost the signal up until it reaches at least 80% screen height. Filtering, we can turn on and off. These help with bandwidth. And Initial pulse suppression, which keeps the initial pulse from being too noisy. This probe is pretty clean in signal, so the suppression doesn't help much. Now that's all for setting up the probe. That's all for this video. If you have any questions about the gauge or at potential applications, please contact us at our website, ndtsystems.com. Thanks. Mm -hmm.